Hey, it's me, Ginger, and I am back with another book review, and today I am going to be reviewing Ride a Cowboy by Jamila Jasper. And this is a book that I had intended to read and review from the very beginning of starting to do these videos. In fact, it was September, October of last year when I said to myself, I'm going to make review videos. And I specifically decided to hone in on self-publishing, and I decided to hone in the romance genre, because I write in romance, so it's only right that the majority of the books I read should be romance. Um, and there were certain authors that I wanted to, to hone in on. So there was C.B. Samet, who have done a, a review of one of her books, so there was Lillian Munro, and Jamila Jasmine. She really stood out to me, and so I was like, that's going to be one of the first books that, that I review. Um, didn't quite happen like that in the end, but anyway. Jamila Jasper is, um, well, her, her pen name I, uh, is a, an African American writer who writes interracial romance, specifically the EWWM uh, subcategory of romance, which means black woman and white male. And um, that's quite a, quite a big, fast moving uh, category of romance on Amazon and I love it. I love it just because of what it represents. Uh, I am a huge advocate of self-publishing and one of the reasons for that is traditional publishing you had gatekeepers who decided uh, which books were commercially viable and which books weren't commercially viable and they tended to play it safe and that tended to mean you had a very very narrow sort of definition of what romance was especially the people uh, in their romance stories. And then Amazon Self-Publishing came about and authors were able to publish their own romance novels about their own definitions of love. And that meant you had books that represented the LGBTQ uh, community in like all its millions of, of different uh, varieties. You have books um, about interracial romances and the, the black woman, white male uh, category of romance was one that really picked up and found its tribe on Amazon, but all of these different subcategories found their tribe. But that's what I love about it. Traditional romance was always very, very, very narrowly defined and kind of like monochromatic, and then Amazon self-publishing empowered people to bring immense diversity into romance and really represent you know, what love meant to them. And Everybody, whatever your your particular de definition of, of romance and attraction and things, could find books that spoke to you, and that I just love that about uh, self-publishing and about what Amazon did when they bought me a Kindle. Anyway, that's why I'm a big fan of that particular category. Um, the other thing that I find uh, really interesting about that category: a few years ago, when I started writing romance novels. Uh, I wrote a romance novel series about mixed martial arts fighters and um, mixed martial arts is, is a diverse sport because you've got a lot of uh, black athletes and brown athletes and athletes of every single different colour uh, and they're all pretty evenly matched and that's one of the reasons why it's such a cool sport to watch. So when I naively jumped into writing a series uh, about mixed martial arts fighters, uh, I didn't even think about it because I'm an upper middle class British kid who grew up in an environment with maybe two or three people who weren't the same shade of white as me um, and they might be the sons of diplomats or whatever so I didn't really understand anything about race and so to me I was writing a series about mixed martial arts fighters and I just had characters based on also, real fighters so I had a character based on um, Michael Bisping, the British guy character based of John Jones, the the, uh, the self-sabotaging but fantastically talented writer. And it was, I remember his character had a girlfriend who was also African-American and she ended up with the Michael Bisping character. Um, and that was a book that I naively and with the best of intentions wrote that was a BWWM book as in an African-American woman and a, a white British male and they ended up together and I don't know I liked it and I thought it was good but it was it was funny I remember at the time I stopped right I stopped going down that avenue because there started to be a, a lot of uh, complaints on the internet uh, from people saying that they didn't think it was right 
that uh, authors who weren't African American were writing books, the BWWM books, and I I thought that that wasn't I. Th it was more, I think, the fact that I was like British and I really didn't understand the racial situation in America. But I was like, you know what? That's not something I should really be writing because I don't really understand that and I should just stick with what um, I can feel is authentic and went on. So I remember logging that in my head. But I didn't necessarily think at the time that the idea of um, somebody who's not African American writing a, a black woman, white male romance book. Uh, was appropriate. I was like, well, if you're a good writer, sure you can do anything. But that was something that stuck in my nugget and it was like rattling around. And then when it came to time for me to start doing these review videos, yep, I wanted to do one of Jamila Jasper's books, especially since she got mixed up in this whole Pocket Gate scandal, which I'm not even going to talk about because whenever you talk about that particular scandal, Google it, you end up talking more about the person who was. Who was the instigator of that rather than the person who's important, which is the author. And so I want to focus on Jamila Jasper as an author. So, wow, that was really long and convoluted. I bought uh, Ride a Cowboy by Jamila Jasper, I think through Kindle Unlimited, and I finally got uh, the opportunity to read it all the way through. This is my review of it. I think it was terrific. More than that, uh, people often are derogatory towards a romance genre and one of the things that I find is the more I read romance, the more I write romance, the more appreciation I have for the romance genre. The definition of a good book, I think, whatever genre it's in, is you read it and you come away from the other side as a changed person. And I will say that Bride a Cowboy, for what it is, which is a, a romance novel, left me a changed person after I read it uh, for a number of reasons and the first one that really really got me was just the the, the level of authenticity to the, the what the story was supposed to be about so in this story you have a towering muscle bound blonde haired blue eyed uh, veteran called Steel Grey and he comes down to this little town uh, to go and stay on his cousin's farm because he just wants to to get out of uh, get out of the big city and, and stay away from people and just spend some time alone. And as soon as he gets down there, he starts meeting all the town's folk. They look at him with suspicion. His cousins uh, weren't necessarily, you know, the, the, the people everyone appreciated most in the town. But everyone was generally fairly accepting of him. But a lot of people were like steer clear of the Robinsons. Who the Robinsons? Whatever. Anyway, to Steel Grey, to his cousin's farm, chilling out, and uh, this little uh, African American kid uh, is running around and is trespassing. And so Steel Grey is like, hey kid, what are you up to? And he's the big, gentle giant, this, this character Steel Grey. Was it Steel Grey a great name, by the way? It sounds like something that would just seem hokey, but it doesn't. It just flows really well in the context of the story. Anyway. So Steel Grey sits down and chats this little boy and he finds out that this this uh, young African-American kid, his last name is Robinson, then the penny drops and you realize that everyone's like, steer clear of the Robinsons because they are the only non-white family in that particular town. And for Steel Grey, what happens next is he encounters the, the, the daughter of this family, Asia, who's basically, um, basically, looking after the entire family because her grandfather is, is starting to go see now and of course they have a mutual attraction and they fall in love and of course the town's folk uh, are antagonistic because they're kind of racist uh, and um, the story does have a happily ever after but I read it and as soon as I sort of got to the stages where all the tension and stuff originated. I, it's like something clicked in my head and I was like, yeah, you know what? I get it. If you are not an African American author, you shouldn't be writing about, you shouldn't be writing BWWM books because you just don't get it. Because this book flowed like the, the story of like the, 
the, the racism, the, the isolation, um, and and even down to like the police harassing the the, the, the brothers of uh, Age's family. It just it was seamless and authentic and true, and it was the crux uh, and the, the sort of compelling aspect of the romance that made it really really great to read and made the happy ending so validating and as soon as I read that I was like you know what if you're an author and you have an African American character and a, um, a white male character and they end up getting together that's fine that's a romance book but that is different I think to what a BWWM book is in which I think just the, the clash of racism and overcoming that and finding the true love together despite all of the, the boundaries that American society in particular puts up between it. That's part and parcel of what that subcategory of romance is and I didn't realise that or appreciate that until I read Jim and Jasper's book and it just clicked me. So yeah, this is a book that I entered into with one opinion and frame of mind and I emerged with a completely different one. And I'm not like a uh, super politically correct person or anything like that. This just spoke to me on a very authentic level. This video's probably been going on forever and I'm not done yet. Okay, so that was the big, big takeaway uh, for me from reading Ride a Cowboy. But in terms of other things, in terms of uh, just the, the book itself, it's a great book. Jamila Jasper is a fantastic writer and it's funny, when I uh, did my last review of Moana Blackwood's book I spoke about how she she was very good at sort of keeping things succinct and visceral um, Jamila Jasper the way she writes almost like poetry it's just so smooth and seamless and very minimalistic but very evocative at the same time, it's funny because the, the, I just whizzed through all of the pages of the book, but even though it was very, very succinct and fast-paced, the the emotional resonance of it was sort of drawn out, just the, the little details of like when uh, Steel Grey first met Adrian, like driving around in the truck and the way his hand was touching her thigh, and these tiny little details, uh, Jim doesn't doesn't compromise on at all and yet the prose is is just really really succinct and poetic and flows and I've never really read another author who just does that quite as seamlessly as, as her so I was just really really blown away by that um, and aside from that as far as romance novels go yeah this is just perfect it's uh, Jamila is a very, very accomplished romance author, so the story hits all of the beats, has all of the resonance, and it has a slightly, it has a deeper resonance, I think, because of the particular subcategory it's in, and because of all of the, the things that it tries to address, but um, it, it wrapped up perfectly. So just as, a, from a technical perspective, and as a romance novel, really, really great. As a writer, Jimena Jasper is fantastic, uh, really, really good, and just from the, the the depth and the the education I got and the emotional resonance of the entire book, it left me changed when I came away from it. And it's funny, this is just a romance book, and people poo poo those all the time. You know what? This is an example of why romance is a genre that deserves so much appreciation. I actually remember speaking to Lily Monroe and we were talking about how the longer we write in romance the more appreciation we have for it as a genre and then you read a book like Ride a Cowboy by Jimena Jasper and it's like yeah really really does have some fantastic examples of writing and it's just snobbery why people don't accept that I think that romance books are written in a style that is like poetry, and in, in that case, then I think Jamila Jasper is just an awesomely talented poet. So, that is my very, very not distinct um, review of Jamila Jasper's book. 
it, is, it has not escaped my notice that today is the Juneteenth, which I wasn't actually aware of until a friend of mine uh, told me about it, which is the day in which, two years after the American Civil War ended, um, the army went down to Texas It was like, hey, slaves are free. So it's kind of like the, the real Emancipation Day. And uh, I've got a lot of friends on like Instagram and stuff who are like, support, support your, your black artists and support your black friends. And, um, it is entirely coincidental that today happened to be the day that I reviewed Camilla Jasper's book because it was one of the books that I intended to review right from the very beginning of this. But I think also all things happen for a reason. I think it's, it's kind of good that it did because uh, I think it's the right time to be having conversations and examining things and having your opinions changed by books and reading books that are outside of the the, the narrow circle that you normally get to. So, yeah, terrific job, uh, Jamila. I will definitely be reading more of your stuff in the future and stay tuned for another book review from me soon. Cheers.